Mean value theorem tells us that if f is continuous on the closed interval AB, so if a function is continuous on the closed interval AB and it's differentiable on the open interval A to B, then there exists a number C okay, in the interval AB such that f prime of C equals f of B minus f of A over B minus A. So that's a mouthful. So let's see if we can kind of uh, break it down and see what it's referring to here. So when they say that the function is continuous, that just means that there's no breaks in the graph. Okay, so you're not picking up your pen or your pencil, it's just a continuous graph. Differentiable, what that tells us is that, you know, that the curve, you can find the derivative at any point along the curve, it's smooth, okay? And then the last part just says that there's a, an x-coordinate, okay, a c-value that's in between the two endpoints, a and b, such that the slope, so when you take the derivative, that's referring to the slope, okay, at that c-value, at that point, is the same as the average rate of change between the two endpoints. Let me show you on the graph what we're looking at here, okay? Just a sample, okay? So say, for example, the graph looks like this, all right? And this point here is A, and this point over here is B, okay? So right here is A, and right here is point B. Okay, so this point here is gonna be A comma F of A. This point's gonna be B comma F of B, okay? And so what this is saying is that there has to be at, you know, at least one C value in between A and B, okay, where the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope, okay, because this is the average rate of change, okay, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, as the average rate of change between these two endpoints. So when you talk about the average rate of change, you're talking about the slope, and you can see right over here at this point, approximately, that tangent line has the same slope as the slope between the two endpoints. And also over here, the slope of that tangent line has the same slope as the slope between the two endpoints. So in this case, you'd have two C values. So right here, we'll say C sub one, and right here, we'll say C sub two. So are you with me so far? Let's look at an example, and I think it'll get a little bit clearer. So in this one here, they tell us that the function is uh, x cubed plus four x, and we're looking at the interval from negative one to one. So first of all, we wanna see, does the mean value theorem apply? So first thing, is the function continuous? Well, we could graph it, okay, or we could do it on our graphing calculator, but we know this is a polynomial, and we know polynomials are continuous. They don't have any breaks in them, okay? Then the next part is, is it differentiable? Meaning, can we take the derivative, you know, in between these two endpoints along this curve? Well, we know polynomials are smooth, there's no corners, there's no cusps, nothing like that. So we know that we're gonna be able to take the derivative along this curve at any point, as well as in between negative one and one. And then the last part is there must be a C value in between negative one and one where that instantaneous rate of change, okay, which is the slope of the tangent line, is the same as the average rate of change between the two endpoints. So let's go ahead and analyze this. So we're gonna put in uh, negative one into our function, so f of negative one, equals negative one cubed plus four times negative one, and f of positive one equals one cubed plus four times one. So this is one plus four is five, and this is, uh, let's see, negative one uh, minus four, which is negative five. So our two endpoints look like they're negative one and negative five, and we've got positive one and positive five. All right. So now what we can uh, go on to do is find the point that's in between negative one and one that has the same slope between these two points. So let's go ahead and find the slope. So we're gonna do the slope formula, y2 minus y1, okay, so five minus negative five over x2 minus x1, one minus negative one. So that comes out to 10 over two, which equals five. So that means that somewhere in between negative one and one, the slope of the tangent line must be five. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. So f prime of x equals three x squared plus four, and that must be equal to the average rate of change, five. So if we solve this equation here, I'm gonna subtract four from both sides, divide both sides by three, take the square root of both sides, so the square root of x squared and the square root of one third, that gives us plus or minus, we take the square root of both sides, you get one over square root of three, or if you rationalize, you get plus or minus square root three over three. 
Now, just to show you, if we graph this, the graph looks something like this. Okay, and you can graph that on your calculator to uh, see that a little bit more clearly. But basically, we have the two endpoints, negative 1, negative 5, that's down here, positive 1, positive 5, that's up here. And if you look at the slope, okay, of the line, uh, let's see if I can do this here more accurately, like, like that, the slope of the line through the two endpoints, in between negative 1 and positive one, there has to be a point where the instantaneous rate of change, say like right there, is the same as the average rate of change. So same thing like right about there. And those are gonna be these two points here at negative square root three over three and positive square root three over three. That instantaneous rate of change is the same as the average rate of change. So I hope this cleared up uh, how to work with mean value theorem a little bit better. Subscribe to the channel, check out some of my past videos, and I look forward to helping you in the future ones. I'll talk to you soon.